Hello, everyone, and happy Fair Housing Month. I want to thank everyone at the NFHA, including President Lisa Rice, for inviting me to this vital conversation. I'm honored to join every distinguished speaker at this event. Thanks to every person tuning in today for all you do to help forge a fairer and more just America. This Fair Housing Month carries particular weight given the recent passing of former Vice President Walter Mondale, who championed the 1968 Fair Housing Act. Vice President Mondale once declared that our nation has unfinished business in fully realizing the promise of that landmark law. I want you to know that as HUD Secretary, I will make advancing fair housing one of my central priorities. For far too long, people of color have faced discrimination in our housing market when trying to rent homes, to secure loans, and to move into neighborhoods where their families can thrive. Let me share just one recent example. Last year, Gwen and Lorenzo Mitchell, a mixed race couple living in Denver, decided to have their home appraised. According to the Mitchells, when their first appraiser came back with a surprisingly low number, they suspected something was wrong. So they scheduled a second visit with a different appraiser. This time, only Gwen, who's white, took part in the process. Everything else in the house remained the same. The result was a new quote that came in at $145,000 higher than their initial estimate. Stories like the Mitchells are still far too common. We cannot abide any attempts to undermine, to tear down, or to weaken our nation's fair housing laws. That is why the Biden-Harris administration is determined to advance an agenda centered around equality, opportunity, and equity. You can see that commitment in the American Rescue Plan, which delivers critical relief to households and communities as they rebuild from the pandemic. This includes 20 million in new funding to advance fair housing efforts. I'm proud to say that I cast my final vote as a member of Congress to help pass this historic law. To build upon the American Rescue Plan, the president has now proposed a discretionary budget to Congress that contains $85 million to support fair housing. This investment would empower HUD's Office of Fair Housing and Equal Opportunity, along with our fair housing allies, with vital resources to enforce the rights of all Americans. To amplify this funding, HUD will enact bold policies as well. During this first week in office, President Biden directed our department to explore solutions for eliminating housing discrimination. This means our nation must have an effective disparate impact rule to break down unjust barriers facing people of color. In addition, I'm happy to report we are taking strong steps to affirmatively further fair housing, and I look forward to sharing more news about these steps in the near future. Moving forward, HUD will redouble our efforts to help more people realize their dream of home ownership. For most Americans, owning a home is still the best way to build wealth. In fact, black and Hispanic households have more than half of their total net worth tied to the value of their homes. Yet the reality is that for too many people, the dream of buying a home is becoming more and more difficult to attain. Today, the home ownership gap between black and white families is wider than it was in 1968 when banks could still legally discriminate against borrowers based on the color of their skin. We cannot accept that. That is why, in the weeks and months ahead, HUD will continue to expand access to credit for first-time buyers, households with lower incomes, and people of color. Furthermore, I will do everything in my power to champion the President's new infrastructure bill. This plan underscores a fundamental truth, that housing represents a vital part of our nation's infrastructure. Secure and stable homes serve as bedrock cornerstones for our society, just like our roads, our bridges, and our public utilities. The President's new bill offers nearly $20 billion in new tax credits through the Neighborhood Homes Investment Initiative. During the next decade, these credits could help build and rehabilitate more than 500,000 single-family homes for buyers of more modest means. This, in turn, can create a pathway to home ownership for more Americans, allowing them to build a source of wealth they can leave behind for their children and their grandchildren. 
When I consider the mission before us, I am reminded of the story of Nehemiah, who was moved by God to restore the walls of Jerusalem after they were destroyed by Babylon. Throughout that process, the enemies of Israel schemed constantly to thwart his progress. As Nehemiah built the walls higher and higher, they called on him to cease his work, to come down and address their grievances. Yet Nehemiah would not bow to their demands. Instead, he told them, I am engaged in a great enterprise and I am unable to come down. Why should the work stop when I leave it to come down to you? Today, I tell you that HUD is engaged in a great enterprise. Our enterprise is to give every American a fair chance at securing a safe, affordable, and dignified place to call home and to live in a thriving community where opportunity is abundant. Like Nehemiah, we will work without fail to accomplish the task at hand. We will not be distracted, we will not be dissuaded, and we will not be denied by the enemies of progress. I know everyone joining this conference shares in that commitment. We can help root out systemic racism from our housing market and from our entire society. HUD is proud to serve as your ally and your partner in this cause. And I look forward to the great enterprise we will accomplish together. Thank you very much and keep fighting the good fight.